What's going on guys, it's Greg here today and I'm bringing you a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 gameplay commentary. Today we're going to be going over some angles, we're going to be going over some other things, and it's all aim training from here because I end up pulling out the Deagle after a little while and you guys will see me just ripping up with the Desert Eagle, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. I'm sorry, did I say the Desert Eagle? I need to go by its uh, fake name because Activision didn't want to shell out some money to get some licenses, so uh, the 50GS. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy this gameplay, and uh, let's go ahead and get right into it and why I like to hop up on this spot. All right, fellers, let's go ahead and talk about why I like to come up here off the rip of the match. So as you guys can see here, number one, we have a nice little peek to this window for anybody who wants to come up the stairs on that side of the map. On top of that, whenever I come over here, I can get a good bit of information. So number one, I'm not worried at the start of the match, someone coming through the cut over here, because generally other teammates will be pushing out, or maybe some other people are going to be... Uh, you know, going down the middle of the map and trying to cut people off. So if I'm coming to the hard point off the start of the match, I'm usually going to come up here on this little grassy turf area, but I always kind of come up here, you know, check there first, check there, and then I'll come up here, and generally by now, someone might peek through this door, they might be over there, maybe they're swimming through the water, but if they're down swimming in the water, we'll definitely hear them, and if they come up jumping here, they're probably going to shoot at somebody else, which gives me time to react. So right now, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for maybe someone who's going to jump up over the vent over there. Maybe they'll come through the door. They're trying to flank. And then, you know, this guy, he's probably going to come looking for someone that's over in this area. So I'll see his gun poking through that window, and then I could take him out. Now, what does it look like, you know, if someone's over here? Well, they're going to come out, and they're probably going to be trying to pre-aim someone who's looking at that way or some of that nature. They're not just going to come out and be like, oh, he's up there. Because a common spot right is someone's gonna be waiting here at the doorway or something of that nature they'll be waiting over here because they got a nice little bit of cover alongside this wall you know the person up there can't really see them so they are funneling people to try to peek them from one of those angles but so if i'm over here you know and if i'm trying to peek out i'm gonna try to go for the guy that might be on that cover right so usually someone will have to react to you right you know they'll have to try to react to you um so that's why I like to go up there. Now, on top of that, let's say I'm on this side. What I'm, I would normally do is I'm not going to peek through here because, one, someone could be up there. Two, there could be a guy there. There could be another guy playing close, you know, and all that kind of jazz. So generally what I like to do on this side is I like to come up here, and I like to first look this way, see if someone's trying to cut the mid. Then I'll go ahead and peek that, peek up there, peek down there, peek over, you know, and so on. Basically, I'm doing it in a very strategic way where I'm doing it one at a time. Boom 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 you know like i'm just so back to the gameplay as you can see here i'm just picking up a few easy kills because these guys are looking at those spots that i was telling you about one of them ended up kind of catching on to me after i got a few kills but i was able to take him out and now i'm just looking for some more picks here i pick off another guy and i'm kind of overstaying my welcome because i've already picked up six kills here and it's not very wise of me to keep staying on that spot because they are going to come by but i can see my teammates are kind of flushing out so i'm going to try to go ahead and make a push however my teammate i just didn't know he was going to wait there and try to wait for that guy especially because i was close to streaks i figured he was going to flush him out because we kind of have that nonverbal communication going on um because he's one of my friends that i play with a lot but he ended up kind of baiting um, for the kill, and I ended up getting taken out. So just kind of unfortunate on that part. As I told you guys about hearing people that are swimming behind you, I hear them. And uh, whenever I was holding down up there, this is another very important thing. So I'm going to go to Photoshop real quick and show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so here we are, guys. We're back in trusty old Photoshop. Let me get a nice little color going here. What should we go for today? You know, we'll do a little red action. So, uh... As I was talking about, up here on the little jump spot, I need to make this a smaller brush. This is where I was, right? And this is P1. So we'll put P1, okay? And uh, this little jump spot that I was on, you know, I'm watching the angles that are over in this area, right? And then, like I said, um, teammates are probably going to be engaging people from their in here or over here on this little cutway. And one of the nice things about holding down this area of the match let me do p1 first so i could just keep it there um one of the nice things about holding down this area right off the rip of the match instead of um just running over you know towards the spawn and dying or maybe going on a flank like you guys you guys saw uh, last time whenever we were going over this map one of the things that is really nice is p1 
P2 is right behind you, right? So this is going to be the second hard point here, right behind you. I know it's a very nice two, as you guys can see. My artistic vision is insanely good. Don't You don't have to tell me in the comment section below. No, I'm just playing, guys. Um, but yeah, so we can just rotate backwards if we do stay alive and keep them off of P1. And again, right here, we're kind of holding spawns for teammates because the squad spawn system in this game, right? So that's kind of like the way, um, you know, the thing that's going on in my mind here because... I want to keep spawns for P2 so we can get advantage of having the second hill in control and in our favor for spawns, uh, since our team should still be spawning, you know, somewhere back here or over here. Um, and that way that they will keep spawning there. And uh, we'll go from having P1 control to P2 control. So as you guys can see, they have P2 control now, our team, and I'm still kind of playing the front lines. Now, I kind of want to go over a little perk here today, and that is going to be the resupply perk. Or re resupply, I think that's what it's called. Um, I really have been enjoying using this perk, and I used to actually run it with Claymores and Bettys because free kills times two on the map, and you have unlimited supply every 25 seconds or so. Um, but I've actually been starting to use it with Semtex, and the reason I've been using this with Semtex is because... In hardpoint, Semtex is very important for keeping your enemies at bay, especially whenever they're trying to play the objective or they're trying to make some sort of cut. And I want to go for a cheeky deagle kill on this guy. Um, ended up almost not playing out in my favor because he was listening for footsteps. Um, but having Semtexes at your disposal, especially two, can come into a very uh, clutch moment for you because if you are going ahead and you are... Um, throwing those semtexes, especially in front of points or ahead of points, you'll be able to take people on and weaken them, and you'll be able to take them out with much more ease. And on top of that, it might clear people out that are trying to push the hard point or trying to get some cheeky angles on you. So you can see if this guy's pushing me, I know based off timing, you know, if I threw a semtex there, um, he's probably going to take some damage, and then he'll be weak for me being able to get a nice free and easy kill on him. Um, so that's why I did that. Also, I dolphin dove to that desk right there is like a cheeky angle and uh, it might have thrown off someone's aim if they're trying to pre-aim me or you know confuse them if they were not looking at that and their reaction might be a little bit muffled or whatever uh, compared to what it would normally be anyways let's talk about this right here um angle sweeping again you know i'm kind of using the uav to my advantage that's up right now so i'm just kind of hugging cover and that's pretty much what i was going for there um i ended up thinking these guys were not pushing up and they were just kind of uh, sitting in the back of spawn, maybe shooting down some streaks or something, but I was wrong, so I ended up getting taken out as I try to push him with my deagle. Now you guys are going to see me pull out the deagle more and try to go for some more kills with the deagle because I was kind of getting bored of using my cast off 545. I was like, you know what? I kind of want to use the deagle. This lobby seems pretty chill. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use my deag. So I go ahead and I throw two semtex. Reason being is I know these guys are spawning over here based off of the location of the UAV and where it was sweeping. So I had two semtex and the goal was if they had uh, the battle or not, I'm sorry, not battle hard, uh, bomb squad perk on, I would have been able to go ahead and throw a semtex. It's going to damage them. And if they're going to keep sprinting, they're going to sprint into the second semtex, which as a result is going to pick up an easy kill for me because, well, they're going to already be weakened, and they're not going to be able to survive two Semtexes. No one can survive two Semtexes unless you are far, you know, at the farthest damage radius. So, um, teammate ends up taking out the guy that was on me. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my cast dot 545, because I really just wanted to get an advanced UAV up. We haven't had one up yet, um, I don't think, at least at this point in the game. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull out my cast dot 545 and try to go for my advanced UAV to help out my teammates and they can get their streaks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so at this point, you know, I'm just kind of playing near these spawn points, just trying to take these enemies out. As you guys can see, I wasn't sure. I never trust teammates fully. I didn't know if that guy really took that guy out that was on the flank there, but he ended up taking the guy out that was on the flank. So I went ahead and um, I decided to just play it a little bit safe and make sure that guy wasn't flanking me at that moment. Now, as you guys can see, I'm over here just kind of playing an angle. I'm one off an advanced UAV, playing near the point once again, trying to hold down spawns near the point, as well as playing near the point to make sure any enemies that are trying to get on the hard point are going to be taken off. I know we have a comfortable spot in the lead, but it's just kind of the way I always play it, is just kind of defend the point, play near the points, and take enemies out who get on the point. So I pick up my advanced UAV. You guys are going to see this guy's just kind of looking around for a kill that was on the 
recent point, and uh, he ends up getting taken out. Another guy spawns in, and pretty much at this point, you know, with the advanced UAV up, a lot of people, I went over this kill streak yesterday, by the way, if you guys missed the video, go ahead and watch it. I broke down the advanced UAV in full. Um, one of the things about that is a lot of people, I feel, just don't know what the advanced UAV is. They don't know what it does, and they just still play reckless when it's up. If someone has an advanced UAV on you, you really do not want to play reckless. You want to play it smart, you want to play it cautious, and you want to try to get them off timing because people are generally going to get more aggressive on you when there's an advanced UAV in the air um, because they know your exact location, and if you're not running ghost, they're going to know your direction in real time. So generally, you want to bait people into making the wrong play when advanced UAV is up. Now, obviously, if you're on a map like Shipment, it's impossible because Shipment is literally just spawn trap simulator. It's just whichever team spawn traps the enemy team first. But on a map like this and the normal maps in this game, that's not the case because the maps are much bigger and spawn traps are much less likely. So um, at this point, again, you know, a lot of these angles that I'm playing that I've been telling you guys about is I am looking to go ahead and take people off based off of cover and hugging walls because I can just go ahead and walk backwards or whatever behind the piece of cover and then I can reposition to try to regain and, uh, you know, retake them on. And as you guys can see here, I switched to my deagle and um, I was just... Whenever you saw me get those three headshots, I just pushed the enemies because it was kind of like a montage moment. I mean, I just got three headshots with a deagle. You know, I'm trying to go for more, uh, but I ended up getting taken out, and that was unfortunate. Not quite sure my bullets are going right there. That was unfortunate. Visual recoil was taking the best of me and uh, all that. So the Desert Eagle, this gun, 50 GS. Is it good, whatnot? You guys saw the class setup I gave out in my class setup with every gun in the game. If you missed that, uh, be sure to look for that on the channel. It's a very recent upload. If not, I'll put it in the description below. And um, yeah, I gave out a class setup for every single gun in the game, ranked every single gun in the game. And the 50 GS is definitely a very good secondary. You can one-shot people to the upper chest. You can one-shot people to the head. And the range on this thing is absolutely disgusting, as you guys can see. If you are an accurate player and you are precise, you will absolutely dominate your enemies, even down at the longest of ranges with this gun. As you guys can see, I am just tapping people down far range. But it is a gun you want to take your time and you want to land some precise shots with, especially if your enemy hasn't noticed you yet, like that guy there, for example. And the reason being is, is if you get that nice little headshot, I mean, they're just instantly deleted back pressing square to respawn again so it is just amazing look at this guy taking me on with an icarus i absolutely two tap him he flinches off target when i shoot him once causing me to get a free and easy kill on him with the desert eagle so overall this gun is absolutely disgusting it's like a pocket sniper rifle in my opinion i think it is a very top tier secondary i think i gave it s tier um, whenever i did the rankings because it's basically like having a pocket marksman rifle and uh, you cannot go wrong with this and it is just such an amazing weapon very powerful indeed and i know if you guys watched me play modern warfare 2019 back in the day you guys know that i was a huge fan of running the 50 gs in the ground war game mode and do not get me wrong guys i still love the 50 gs in this game and it is definitely going to be a weapon that i rock more uh throughout the years and the game goes on Anyways, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over today for you guys. I wanted to go over some more starting off, you know, how I start off the matches and, you know, the resupply perk. It's really good, especially if you're running Semtexes and you can use it aggressively, you can use it defensively, but I, I see a lot of people just running fast hands in this game and fast hands or even cold blooded. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think I'm going to do a perks tier list soon because whenever I do the tier lists, it's not about just the whole tier list aspect of ranking things and you know because it's interesting to see where people's opinions stand on certain things but it's more about giving you guys the tips and tricks on why it's not that important or why it's you know maybe not as good as maybe you might think it is right so that's the whole point of me doing the tier list videos is it's more about giving you guys the inside of my mind with my tips and tricks and stuff because I know a lot of you guys do trust my opinions on things and I want to make sure that you guys are getting the right opinion and um, you guys can do what you will with my information, you know, whether you value it or not. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay. I was having so much fun with this 50GS, and uh, I'm not going to lie, guys, 
I actually took a little break from this game recently. I played a little Vanguard last night because I really miss 10v10 and 14 versus 14 because I'm a guy who really just likes action, you know? Like, I already know about all the tactics and all that kind of stuff of what I'm going to do in games, right? You know, so I just want to just have a lot of targets to shoot at and just, I don't know, just, just aim, you know? I like to shoot my gun. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. Let me know what you guys think in the description or the comment section below. Jeez, brain fart. Um, and I will see you on the next one. Peace out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.